Well, this may go down as the decade coal energy died, but it's not going down without a fight. Minnesota energy companies are still relying on coal even when cheaper and cleaner energy is available. And it may be costing ratepayers millions. Tom Lydon of the Fox 9 Investigators here tonight with us. And Tom, this is called the last gasp of coal. It could be how times have changed. Nowadays, coal energy is actually a pretty good way to lose money. By one estimate, 74% of the coal plants in this country are no longer economically viable. But regulated monopoly utilities do not lose money. They recover costs from consumers who almost always pick up the bill. It's one of the greatest engineering achievements of the last century, and we seldom give it a second thought. The modern electrical grid, seamlessly delivering power with the flip of a switch, always there, always on. And yet coal and the carbon pollution that comes with it is still providing roughly a third of Minnesota's electricity needs. There's almost never an hour where coal isn't operating. Energy analyst Joe Daniel of the Union of Concerned Scientists was the first to analyze how coal plants are operating even when cheaper renewable energy sources like wind and solar are available, costing U.S. consumers a billion dollars a year. That practice of running coal plants 24-7 is called self-commitment or must run. Is this costing the consumer? Yeah, by, by all of the evidence that I've seen, these costs are being recovered onto the backs of, of retail customers. So people like you and me who pay our monthly electric bill. And it's why Minnesota's Public Utility Commission has launched its own investigation, demanding the three electrical utilities in Minnesota, Excel, Ottertail Energy, and Minnesota Power, all provide two years of detailed data on their coal plants. Much of that data, like fuel cost, is considered a trade secret. But Fresh Energy, a nonprofit clean energy advocacy group, was allowed to analyze the raw numbers. Our investigation found that in Minnesota, the three utilities you mentioned, um, their plants are running at a loss between 30 and 60 percent of the time, depending on the unit. And for many of those hours, there's certainly cheap wind or cheap solar available. Excel operates four coal plants in Minnesota, three units at the Sherco plant in Becker, as well as the King plant in Bayport. During a colder than average February two years ago, when energy prices were pretty typical, Fresh Energy discovered one of the Sherco units was operating at a loss 68% of the time. That same month, the King plant was in the red 64% of the time. Fresh Energy found the biggest losses came during so-called seasonal buffer months in the fall and spring, when demand is lower and renewables like wind and solar more plentiful. But as regulated utilities, the companies aren't eating these losses. Fresh Energy estimates Minnesota consumers could be overpaying up to $90 million a year. In Minnesota, it's likely showing up on consumers' bills. The utilities um, are running at a loss, but consumers pay for the cost of operating those coal plants, and so that will be either baked into their rates or it'll show up in overpaying for fuel. So yeah. I think people will be surprised that a coal plant would run at a loss. Why would they do that? Well, there are some legitimate reasons to do it, and there are some less legitimate reasons to do it. For one thing, a coal plant isn't something you can just turn on and off. It can take up to 48 hours to power up. There's also the demands of our electrical grid. The Mid-Continent Independent System Operator, or MISO for short, extends from Manitoba through Minnesota and 15 other states all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Energy from coal, nuclear, gas, wind, and solar all contributes to the grid, creating a wholesale energy market. It underpins everything we use. We often take it for granted. We only notice it when the lights are out. University of Minnesota professor Masood Amin is considered the father of the so-called smart grid, the ability of the grid to self-monitor and predict problems and react at nearly the speed of light. He says the problem with the current grid is it prioritizes reliability above everything else, including fuel cost and the environment. What's the price of emissions? 
What's the price of greenhouse gases? What's the price of outages? If we price it, we can include those in these optimization models. Because right now, we're not pricing in any of that. We are not. The solution to relying on coal, he believes, is not just one massive smart grid, but thousands of smaller grids at the level of neighborhoods and small towns that could prioritize local energy demands. It doesn't become a single optimum choice, but it becomes a compromise solution. It becomes a where do you function at what point to keep the system operational while it's economical, while it has the least emissions. Excel is considered an industry leader in renewables, having promised to go carbon free by 2050 and shutting down its coal plants by 2030. And it's why we're dedicated to providing 100% carbon free energy by 2050. But after the Public Utilities Commission began investigating must run coal, Excel started cutting back operations at two of its coal plants and has proposed operating those units seasonally. The King plant and one of the Sherco units would be idled in the spring and fall. Excel estimates that alone will save 35 million in fuel costs and another 20 million in operations and capital costs. It would also reduce carbon pollution by 5 million tons a year. That's enough to power 2 million homes for a year. And if that makes you wonder how much we've been relying on coal when we didn't have to, you're not alone. The Minnesota Attorney General now wants Excel and the other utilities to provide five years of data on their coal plants. But Excel has pushed back, writing, we do not believe the Attorney General's proposal to address prudency issues or to second guess past decisions would be productive or appropriate, and that the investigation should focus on now and into the future, rather than a deep dive into past dispatch practices. For those that follow this issue closely, the paradox is that even as Excel has been promising to phase out coal over the next decade, they may have been squeezing every last bit of carbon from a dying industry. Again, I think it has to do with inertia. They've operated their grid for, you know, 100 years um, with, with these coal plants being uh, a center part of, of that operation, and it it's scary to, to, to change your paradigm, to change the way you've, you've operated for so long. Minnesota Power and Ottertail Energy have said it's more difficult for them to cut back on coal because they don't have the excess capacity that Excel does. Excel declined an on-camera interview for this story, but in a statement to the Fox 9 investigators said, we are committed to leading the clean energy transition, reducing carbon emissions while delivering on our promise of reliability and keeping bills low for our consumers. The three utilities are supposed to provide more recent data on their coal plants to the regulators coming up on March 1st. And speaking of Excel, there had been talk about raising rates. Is that connected to this in any way? Yeah, good question. And by the way, that rate increase has been delayed, but it's a little bit apples and oranges here. You know, when we were talking about a rate increase, that's really for infrastructure. That's what Excel Energy had planned on. In terms of any savings from coal, we would be talking more about a fuel charge, which is passed directly to consumers, and that's really separate from the rate increases. But, you know, there is some belief that some of this, what we're paying for coal, is also baked into that rate increase sure. as well. I think one of the fears that Excel has is that maybe some of these advocacy groups, if we find out, if we go back five years and find out if we've been overpaying millions and millions and millions of dollars, that some of these groups may start saying, maybe we should rebate customers oh, wow. in terms of that fuel cost. Mm. All right, Tom. Thank you.